Welcome to Podcast 6, Cardiac History. Hello, I'm Fran. And I'm Minnie. Um, and as normal, we really need your feedback, please, on the forum. If you could score the podcast for us, that's incredibly useful because with that data, we can go back to our donors and it helps us with our fundraising, which in turn, of course, helps us improve the service and do more of these uh, podcasts. Great. Thanks, Fran. Um, this podcast tip is to talk about summarising. So when you've seen your patient, um, it's quite useful to summarise what they've told you about their presenting complaint. So this will allow you to check your understanding regarding everything the patient has told you. Uh, and it also allows you to correct any inaccurate information that allows, sorry, allows the patient to correct any inaccurate information that you may have thought they've said. And also allow you to expand further on, on certain aspects of the history. Once you've summarised, the patient um, can tell you if there's anything you've overlooked. And then as you go through the rest of the history, you can just periodically summarise um, and make sure that you both are understanding the same things. Brilliant. Thank you, Minnie. And so, as Minnie said, this topic today is on taking cardiology history. Um, and so I'm going to take a history from Joan. Good morning, Hello. Joan. Hello, I'm Joan. And, and Joan, how old are you? I am um, 68. And why have you come to see me today? I've been getting uh, terrible pains in my chest. Okay, so let me ask you some more about the chest pain, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, I'm for, for the listeners, I'm going to use an acronym called Socrates to remind me what questions to ask about pain. And if you download the document that goes alongside the podcast, it will explain which um, each of the letters stand for. But I'm, I'm going to do it in a more fluid way so, um, so it works better with the patient. So... Joan, um, tell me more about this chest pain. Where is it? Well, it's right in the middle of my chest, um, and it's uh, it's very uncomfortable. And how long ago did that start? I'm not sure exactly, but I think it was about two months ago I, I started getting it, and I thought it was uh, indigestion. Okay, and could you describe the pain to me? Well, it's... Um, it's it's a heaviness in in my chest like an elephant is sitting on me. Goodness me, that sounds really uncomfortable. <laughs> it's very uncomfortable. <laughs> and um and does that elephant sitting pain, does that go anywhere else other than your chest? Well I get a funny feeling down my left arm and sometimes if the pain's really bad, um I start to feel it in my throat and in, into my jaw on the, all on the left side. Okay. And when the pain is there, do you have any other symptoms with it? Uh, I often struggle to get my breath um, okay. and I can't go any faster if I'm walking. And I, I've been told that I go a bit pale and, and sweaty, people have told okay. me. Okay. And these episodes where you have the pain and you're short of breath, how long do they typically last for? Well, it's variable, but probably about 10 minutes I suppose, but I, I seem to be getting them more frequently than when they first started, and, and the pain's definitely getting worse. And have you noticed anything in particular bringing this pain on? Well, it's definitely worse when I'm exercising or, or trying to walk quickly, and definitely worse when I have to go uphill. And, and okay. if it's cold and windy, or, or like at the moment here when it's snowy, uh, I, I definitely get it more frequently. Okay, and does anything make it better? I have to stop um, and rest and then it, it settles down. Okay, thank you. And um, with, with this pain, obviously an elephant sitting on you sounds like it's very severe. Mm -hmm. If we were to rate that on a scale where from 0 to 10, so 0 would be no pain at all and 10 would be the worst pain ever. Some people might equate that to childbirth. How <laughs> bad do you think this pain is? I would say probably about an eight out of ten. So, yeah, okay. pretty bad. Okay, and um, Joan, I'm just go go on to ask you some particular questions about your heart, if I may. Mm -hmm. um, so you've mentioned that you get short of breath on exercise. Yeah. Um, do you ever get short of breath in the night time? 
No, not at all. Um, and how many pillows would you sleep with? Uh, I tend to sleep with one pillow. Okay. So, um, so as an aside to, yep. to those listening, um, the relevance of those questions. So um, they are both related to heart failure. So the waking in the night, typically patients describe feeling very short of breath and they will run to a window and throw it open to get more fresh air mm -hmm. in. And that's called paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea or PND. Mm -hmm. Um, and the pillow question, so that gives you an indication of how upright the patient is having to sleep, and that's called orthopnea. And typically, patients with heart failure will need to sleep more and more propped upright as mm. the fluid builds up in their lungs. Yep. Okay. Great. So, carrying on with uh, the, uh, the heart questions, Joan, if I may, um, mm -hmm. can, have you noticed any palpitations where you can feel your heartbeat in your chest? No, I don't think so. No. And okay, thank you. And <laughs> have you had any episodes where you felt dizzy or you fainted or lost consciousness? No. And uh, Joan, do you get any ankle swelling? Oh, actually, now you mention it, I have noticed that after a day working in the fields, that my ankles are quite swollen. Actually, okay. And would would that go down when you're asleep at night or would they stay swollen? Yes, usually they're better by the morning when I've been lying down. Okay. And are you getting um, any pain in your legs, particularly your calves on walking? So this would be, I guess, a similar sort of idea to your chest pain in that that's coming on when you exercise are you getting a similar symptom in your leg no what, what, what would that be doctor so that's um so that's when somebody has what's called peripheral vascular disease so it's a bit like angina but in the legs um again okay. because because the blood supply isn't isn't adequate to the legs mm. um due to furring of the arteries right. um and then joan finally do you have any other sim any other more general symptoms such as um night sweats or weight loss no nothing else that i can think of Okay, so Joan, if I may just summarise, mm -hmm. what you're saying is that over the past two months, you've developed a new central chest pain, which feels like, um, was it an elephant sat on your chest? Yes, yes, it's an elephant, yes. definitely. <laughs> okay, um, and that's um, going into your left arm and into your neck, and you feel short of breath, and apparently you look clammy when that happens, mm -hmm. um, and it's lasting for about 10 minutes, and it's being triggered by exercise particularly if it's windy but you're able to relieve it by resting yeah um and otherwise the only other symptom you've noticed is some ankle swelling when you've been working in the fields perfect thank you right <laughs> so um if Joan had mentioned any other symptoms, we would, um, so for example, if she had talked about having leg pain, we would have gone into much more detail on that, asking again questions about the onset, duration, course, severity, yeah. etc. Thank you. Right, Joan, let me ask you um, a little bit about the rest of your medical history, if I okay. may. Um, um, and in particular, sort of related to your heart and um, blood pressure and stroke. So have you ever had um, a diagnosis of heart problems or high blood pressure, anything like that? Yes, I was told I had uh, high blood pressure a few years ago. Okay. And um, any other medical conditions that you've been told you have? No. What, okay. and what would you, you be worrying about? What should I... Well, um... Well, I'm not suggesting that you should have any of them, please. But um, um, so things, um, so for example, something like diabetes um, would spring to mind, or if you'd had rheumatic fever as a child. Okay, no, no, I haven't had any of those. Okay, and have you ever had um, an operation? Uh, I had to have a cesarean uh, for one of my children. Okay, and other than that time when obviously you were in hospital, have you ever been admitted to hospital? No. Any other time? No. Okay. So, so just to summarise that, you say you were told you had blood pressure a few years ago, and um, moving on to sort of medicines, then Joan, are you on medicines for your blood pressure? Well, no. I was. I was given some. Um, I can't remember what it was called, but it made me feel really 
ill, so I stopped taking them. Okay, and did you go back to the clinic to see um, to get some advice about that? No, no, but I did. Um, I started taking an aspirin a day because a friend told me that it would be good for me, so I, I I've done that. Okay, and you're buying that yourself, are you? Yes. Okay, and are you taking any other medicines at all, either that are being prescribed or that you're buying um, over the counter from the shop no. pharmacy? No. Okay. Um, and are you allergic to anything? Just cats. Just cats. Okay. <laughs> we won't prescribe one of those. Okay. Um, few. So Glad that's not just the summarize. Um, just summarizing that. So you were on a blood pressure tablet, but mm -hmm. you're no longer taking it. But you are taking an aspirin a day. Yes. Fantastic. Thank you. So, um, Jen, I'm just going to ask you a little bit about your family history. So. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any family history of what we call cardiovascular disease? So that's things like heart attacks, strokes, blood pressure. Um, my mother, yeah, she died from heart disease when she was 70. Okay. And, and is that worrying you with you having these chest pains? Yes, because I'm nearing, nearing that age now. So I'm starting to worry that it's something similar. Okay, okay. I think that's a, a fair enough thing to, to be worried mm. about. And we can certainly talk about that once we've done some um, in the examination and mm. some testing. Okay. Um, and just of note, obviously, um, excuse me, Joan, just of note mm. to those listening that, that Joan is obviously an older patient, but um, had she been younger, we might also ask about um, any unexplained deaths in young relatives, which would maybe be suggestive of a congenital um, abnormal rhythm or um, congenital heart disease. Mm. Okay. Right. Um, and then, so finally, Joan, um, I just uh, want to ask you a little bit about about the rest of your life. So um, are you smoking? Yeah. Yeah, I smoke. Yeah. And how, how many cigarettes are you smoking a day? Mm, well, between 10 and 15 a day, probably. But everyone okay. smokes, so I, I'm not always sure we all share the same packets. Okay. <laughs> Right, not ideal, and and certainly we can we can address that in due course. Mm. Um, do you drink any alcohol? No. Nope. And do you use any what we call recreational drugs, things like marijuana? Oh no. Yeah. Okay. And Joan, um, are you still quite active? Do you do any exercise? Well, I'm still working in the fields, but I, I'm finding it harder with the the chest pains, and uh, I. I look after my grandchildren. I'm finding that harder work with this pain. Okay. And um, so who are you living with? Well, I live with my husband and my daughter uh, and her children. And I, I'm the one who does the cooking and the shopping and the cleaning. And, and when my daughter's working, I look after the grandchildren. But as I say, I'm finding it much more difficult with this chest pain because I can't lift them and the cleaning's harder work. Okay, so as well as obviously being, you know, worried about it because of your mum's history mm. and it being uncomfortable, it's actually having quite an impact on your life as well because it, because it's stopping you do, doing the things that are keeping you mm. independent and, and helping your daughter as well. That's right. Okay, brilliant. I, th I think that's all the questions that I want to ask. Thank you very much, Joan. We will thank move you. on to examining you in another podcast. Okay, um, thank you. And back to Minnie. Minnie, do you, do you, thank you very much for playing Joan. That's Hello. Okay. And um, do you have um, any other points that we haven't talked about that you, that you would like to raise? Uh, I don't think so. I think... Um... Oh, Minnie, I've lost you. Oh, have you? Can you hear me now? No, no, you're back again. Oh, Joan, I'm sorry. Indeed. Thank the you. the uh, internet is a bit patchy at the moment. Um, I think um, the summarising is very important and... Um, it's good to note that with any pain or with any symptom that there are those more detailed questions that you need to go on to ask. Brilliant. Thank you very much for listening. Okay, thank you.